I just placed an order for a two year certificate of deposit paying over 5% annualized yield. This is the longest duration CD I've ever bought in my life. When it comes to fixed income investments like CDs and US treasuries, higher duration typically comes with higher risks, which requires higher yield to compensate for those risks. In this video, I'm going to go over two reasons why I finally decided to start buying longer duration CDs with a maturity of two years and beyond. And spoiler alert, one of those reasons has to do with making the US government pay off my mortgage. And be sure to stay till the end of the video where I'm going to go over my game plan for when I might even consider buying longer duration fixed income assets such as five year and 10 year CDs and US treasuries. If you're brand new to CDs, be sure to watch this video that I made right here where I go over the basics of buying brokered CDs on Fidelity. Even though I'm mainly using examples of CDs in this video, just realize that a lot of these concepts apply to other fixed income assets such as US Treasuries. All this right after. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Learn to invest like a wolf at your own risk. What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, Wolves of Investing. My name is Donnie Nguyen and I'm the founder of Wolves of Investing. If you're new, I talk about anything on my mind related to personal finance and investing. If you want to learn how to achieve financial freedom through investing, be sure to click on that subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't yet. And please remember to drop a like if you enjoyed this video as it truly helps out the channel. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right. So the first reason I decided to go with longer duration, non-callable brokered CDs of two years and beyond, once the annualized yield hit 5% has to do with paying off my mortgage. This particular reason may not apply to your current situation, but listen anyways, because it might apply to someone, you know, and you can share this information with them. Or it might apply to you at some time in the future and you'll be one step ahead of the game if you already know this information. So like many of you who own a home, I refinanced my mortgage down to a historically low rate of two and a half percent in 2020. Take a look at this chart here from the St. Louis Fed and mortgage rates got to their lowest levels in 45 years in late 2020 and early 2021. And in my opinion, one of the best things you can do to achieve financial freedom is to pay off your debts. With the mortgage being one of the largest debts that most people incur throughout their lifetime, one of the best ways to pay off a mortgage early is to simply make extra payments every year. However, because non-callable two-year CDs, which are FDIC insured up to $250,000 per bank, are now paying a hefty yield of 5%, rather than paying off my mortgage early, which guarantees me 2.5%, I can buy these 5% yielding CDs, which essentially is like making the US government pay my mortgage for me. It's almost as if the US government is paying me to live in my house. Now, of course, I do have to account for taxes since I'm paying my mortgage with after-tax money, but the 5% I'm getting on my CDs are before taxes. So assuming my effective tax rate is approximately 20%, the break even on a CD for me is 3.125%. Anything over that, and I'm making money by not paying off my mortgage early. And this is just my effective tax rate. If you're doing this at home, you're going to have to calculate the break even for your own tax rate, which may be higher or lower. To me, 5% provides a large enough margin of safety over my break even to start buying longer duration CDs, such as two years or potentially even three or four years. Warren Buffett famously stated his number one rule, which is don't lose money. And his number two rule, which is never forget rule number one. And this play that I'm making here by not paying off my mortgage early and instead buying FDIC insured CDs with significantly higher yield than my mortgage rate 
is one way that I'm implementing Warren Buffett's number one and two rules. Now, this plan is not 100% risk free. In my opinion, the main risk with my plan, and I'm not saying it's the only risk, but I think it's the main risk, is execution risk. What I mean by execution risk is that if and when my rates start falling below my break even point, I have to have the discipline to take all the money that I invested in these CDs that I otherwise would have used to pay off my mortgage early and then use it to actually pay down my mortgage. I need to make sure that I'm not tempted to then use that money for something else, like putting it towards a new car or fancy vacation or something else silly like that. For me, I know I have the discipline that I'm not going to do something like that since I've been investing for a very long time. But it is something to consider for yourself if you decide to try this out. It's really one of those know thyself kind of things. All right, so the second reason I decided to buy longer duration CDs of two years and above at 5% yield is that I do not believe inflation will be above 5% by the end of this year, which means that I could potentially be beating inflation with these very low risk CDs by the end of the year if I'm right, which also means that rates might not be going much higher before the Fed finally decides to pause their interest rate hikes. Now, this is definitely a riskier bet that I'm making because inflation could end up being a lot stickier like it was in the 1970s. January's headline CPI year over year increase came in at 6.4%. There's still a lot of global supply chain risk with the war in Ukraine and tensions between the US and China. However, even if I'm wrong and inflation keeps staying high, coupled with my first plan of using CDs to pay off my mortgage early, I still view that the risk of holding longer durations of two to about four years with 5% yield is worth it. All right, so now that we've discussed the main reasons I decided to go with longer duration CDs paying a minimum of 5%, I wanted to talk about my game plan on when I might buy even longer duration CDs, such as five years and 10 years. And just remember that I'm talking about non-callable CDs. And also note that when it comes to longer duration, like five or 10 years, I'm much more likely to purchase U.S. Treasuries on the secondary market instead of CDs, since CDs are typically very illiquid assets. So I probably won't be able to sell them back on the secondary market, even if I wanted to. Whereas U.S. Treasuries are supposed to be highly liquid. And although I've never tried it before, I should be able to sell back my Treasuries on the secondary market on a broker like Fidelity if I need to. And of course, if I do sell it back in the secondary market, barring some unexpected life event, I plan to sell it back at a profit, not a loss. With that out of the way, here are some tables that I made to help plan when I would buy five year and 10 year CDs and treasuries. If five year CDs or treasuries start paying 6%, that's when I think I would consider buying them. And if 10 year CDs or treasuries started paying 7%, that's when I would probably consider buying them. So remember that inflation compounds every year. So if we get 5% inflation year after year, we'd actually need higher than 5% on our fixed income to beat that inflation. So with these tables, I'm estimating what my after-tax compound rate of return is, assuming a 20% effective tax rate. And of course, if you're doing this at home, you have to adjust these assumptions for your own particular case. And if you're using U.S. Treasuries instead of CDs, you may be saving money on state and local taxes. So that's another thing to consider. But as always, taxes are something you should consult with your tax advisor as taxes can be complicated and tax rules can always change. So let's look at this first example using a four year duration. As you can see here with the 5% fixed rate of return, a total return over four years would be 20%. It's just five times four equals 20. If I apply a 20% tax, that would be 16%. And for this example, if I took the fourth route, that would give me an annualized compound return of 3.78% over four years. And this is somewhat arbitrary, but just based on my own personal risk tolerance, I'm willing to take on four years of fixed income FDIC insured non-callable duration with a minimum compound return of 3.78%. I feel like that gives me enough margin of safety to take on that level of duration risk. 
Now, if I assume a 6% yield, I may consider buying five years all the way to nine years duration, with the five year giving me an annualized 4.4% compound return and the nine year giving me 4.07% compound return after taxes. Just note that my assumption is that inflation will not be above 4% over that time frame. And when it comes to 10 to 15 year durations, I would want at least 7% yield, which would be 4.55% annualized compound return for the 10 year and 4.15% compounded for the 15 year, given my assumptions. I really do not expect rates to go that high, which is why I didn't create a table that goes beyond 15 years. But who knows? Maybe inflation this time around will be just as bad as it was in the 1970s, which forced Paul Volcker's Fed to raise rates close to 20% in the early 1980s. If that happens, I'll have to adjust my plan accordingly. All right, so to recap, the two reasons I'm going with longer duration CDs and US Treasuries above 5% are to get the government to pay off my mortgage for me and to potentially beat inflation with a nearly risk-free asset. And I'm considering going above five-year duration if yields go above 6% and 10-year duration if yields go above 7%. So let me know in the comments, what's the longest duration CD or US Treasury that you bought and how did that go for you? If you enjoyed this video, feel free to share it with your family and friends. And since you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you're also interested in other fixed income investments. So be sure to watch this playlist that I made right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.